Mike so Sandra says it's the chicken and the egg example. So speaking of biology and life, um, life, is, life is complicated, right? Life is complex. So societies just evolve and people do things and like you, you can't really predict what's going to happen and you have all this complex behavior. But um, and in society it sort of arises from complex rules of interaction between people. But with computers and cellular automata particularly, what we can do is very, very loosely model life and we get this. Um, and it's, it's similar to actual society in that like it's very complex behavior and, and we can't tell by looking at it how it's going to end and what's going to end up. Maybe small things could, could balloon into you know, huge influential events like people, like one person you know, influences the whole future. Like, um, it's fascinating. So what I'm going to do is talk about these rules and what this program is and how it works. Um, so this is Conway's Game of Life. It's really cool. So we have this grid of, of boxes. Um, and each box is termed a cell, cellular automata. And that's automata because it evolves, it keeps going based on simple rules autonomously. Like it does it by itself. So we have this huge grid. And you can think of each cell here as though it were its own little organism, uh, just sort of going through life. <laughs> um, so let's consider this one. Uh, if we are this cell, like a cell is a place for an org organism to exist or not exist. So there, there are some very simple rules. Um, you have them written down? You get to just have a piece of paper that said them. Sure. Right. Oh. right. So a cell is either filled in or it's not filled in. So if we are alive, say we are this cell right here. If we're alive and there's only one cell around us, we die of loneliness. <laughs> And so this cell would die. Uh, if there are two, if there are two cells, it's okay. It's a healthy sort of environment. Like those are our parents, maybe, and we live. We're this cell. If there are three, maybe it's our parents and a brother or something. We we live. Uh, but if there are four, and these numbers I'm talking about is the total number of living cells in our neighborhood. So these surrounding eight cells is the neighborhood of this particular cell. So if there are four living cells in the neighborhood of this one, then it dies of overpopulation, of suffocation. Four or more. If there are more than four, then the cell dies. And if the cell, if the cell, what? If the cell is not alive, um, then it, then if there are three in its neighborhood, then it comes alive. So if there are three cells around it that are alive, then it, they birth a child or something. So this is the entire rule set, these, these very few number of rules that makes this thing happen. So it, it starts off with just randomly filled in cells. Oh, no, what have I done? Uh, it starts off with just randomly filled in cells. And let's just look at the code quickly. Um, cellular automata. So neighboring cells is get cell x, y plus 1. And we go through this list of things. We basically get all the cells in our surrounding neighborhood and put them into a list. Um, this notation means array. This is like a list, a list, a list of cells. A cell is an object, which I made, which has a property of either being alive or dead, basically. And it's drawn as a square. And um, so if my value is 1, my being 
the cell that, that we're considering at the moment. And mind you, this is inside of a loop. Um, note this dub, double for loop for each x and for each y. So the stuff inside of these double for loops is going to be executed once for every cell. So let's look on the inside. So my is the cell at x, y. If my value is 1, meaning that I'm white, I'm alive, there's something living in this cell. If there are less than 2, then I die of loneliness. If there are more than 3, then die of overpopulation or suffocation. So this can be encoded as um, if this neighborhood sum, which we calculated a few lines ago, just added up for each cell in neighboring cells, neighborhood sum is you add that cell's value. So for example, with this cell, neighborhood sum would be 3, right, the number of living cells around it. If my value is 1, then um, if the neighborhood sum is 2 or 3, so if there are two things around me or three, then my next value, the value that I will be in the future, is going to be one. I'm going to stay alive. So otherwise, I'm going to die. Value is zero. My next value is zero. So else if my value is zero, this means if the cell is originally dead, if the cell is originally black, there's nothing there. In that case, then, if the neighborhood sum is exactly three, then my next value is 1. Otherwise, I stay dead. So if, if there are three people around me, then I'm going to be born into this cell. Um, that's basically it. And we calculate the colors and whatnot. But that's the uh, essential piece of the program. And when we run it, this is what we get. Conway's Game of Life. Any questions? Yeah. Does it ever repeat itself? Does it ever repeat itself? Well, we'll see. Uh, now it's repeating itself every two frames. So it's actually hit a steady state now. So, so you, you can go on forever; it will never change. At this point, at this point, yeah, it's it's in a, it's in a periodic cycle, so it's never going to change. Like but. So let's see, does my mouse click work? Uh, I don't remember. No, it doesn't work. But I mean, it depends on the initial conditions, right? Let's do it, let's run it again. Oops. If we run it again, it might never do that because the initial conditions are random. Think of this as a computer program. This is the halting problem of computer science, Alan Turing's halting problem. So that basically said that and this is in the handout, I believe. Is it, Justin? Maybe not. Oh, sorry. But um, Alan Turing's halting problem says that if you have a, a given computer program, there is no compu computer program that you can write that will analyze that program and tell you whether or not it will stop. So stopping, halting, coming to an end or coming to a stable point is unpredictable. It's impossible to, to predict given a set of inputs, whether or not the, cell, the, the system will ever come to a, a stable point. So this, the configuration of cells initially, is actually a computer program that's going to be set in motion when we start the simulation and start applying these rules. So we can get like the whole Turing machine thing just by moving things on the cells, right? They're, home, they're almost like the same thing. So you can like a Turing machine. A Turing machine, right. So yes, applying these rules can be reduced to a Turing machine. Yeah. And the Turing machine can also be reduced to that. What? A Turing machine is like the lowest level of existence of a computer program. Like it's. <laughs> right, but yeah, but I think it's, a, it's equivalent. I'm not sure if game. I think Game of Life is, but I know some other cell 